Hello again from Santa Cruz Catholic Church in Tucson. And Father Stephen and I want to offer you these reflections that we post for you each Wednesday. Wednesday being the special day when the church um, honors St. Joseph with her devotion. We finished the litany last week. Um, so what do we do now? Well, there's one little part of the, the last part of the litany that I want to talk about. And I also want to talk a little bit more about the last invocation about Joseph being the protector of the universal church. But you know when we finish the litany, how we always say, the Lord God made him master of his household and prince over all his possessions. Joseph has a very great responsibility in heaven. And I want to share with you something uh, about Joseph in heaven because uh, I believe that he was assumed like Mary, his spouse, bodily into heaven. Um, this is not a defined dogma as is the glorious assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary, which we celebrated last Sunday. And by the way, we're in a kind of octave of the assumption because next Sunday will be the Queenship of Mary. However, because that doesn't rank as high as the assumption, we will be doing the 21st Sunday of Ordinary Time. But in any case, uh, speaking of the Assumption of Joseph, there's an interesting uh, and, and sometimes overlooked verse in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 27. Uh, this is, you know, the, the chapters at the end after Jesus, or when Jesus has risen from the dead, and it says, uh, on the day of his resurrection, many of the bodies of the dead rose and they went into the holy city Jerusalem and were seen by many that kind of gets you thinking no I mean the bodies of what happened afterwards I mean did Jesus uh, take them to heaven the bodies too I, I don't know what the answer to that is but I certainly believe that uh, Saint Joseph was one of them even contemplating Joseph visiting the Blessed Virgin Mary, his spouse, as his son surely would have done at his resurrection. Now I know that a lot of these things aren't defined and, and yet in keeping with um, the, the, the grace and the mission of the glorious Saint Joseph, it certainly seems fitting that he would have been assumed into heaven um, to be with Jesus the son he cared for and for his spouse, Mary. Um, and I'm not making this up. I mean, very illustrious saints and doctors of the church have even had this opinion. It was certainly the adamant opinion of St. Francis de Sales. So I offer that uh, just as something to think about, about how just another example or evidence of the specialness of St. Joseph and truly he is the prince of all the Lord's possessions and he really is looking after um, the church which is the body of Christ. Um, so we come back then to that last invocation, Joseph, protector of the universal church. Um, I was reading about this just this past week. Uh, because Pope Francis has declared this the year of Joseph, as a way of, of marking and celebrating the 150th anniversary of that uh, declaration we talked about last week of Pius the, um, uh, forgive me, uh, Pius the Ninth regarding the patronage of Joseph of the Universal Church, that was in 1870. To see what was going on in the church, especially in Italy, there was a movement, you know, at that time, there, were, there was a large territory of the Vatican they called the Papal States. So the Pope was really also a temporal ruler of a lot of territory in Italy. And we can't go into all of that, and there's a lot of politics and different opinions about whether that was good or bad. As a matter of fact, all the Pope and the Church lost all of that territory, and the Church is reduced to the acreage uh, that it has now, but it's one of the smallest um, city, state nations in the world. But the fact that it still exists like that, that's due to the Lateran Treaty that was made in 1929. But again, I mention this because 
those were really, really difficult. We might even say bad times for the church and the Pope has weighed on him so much. And so he was, he was motivated to make this declaration of Joseph in those circumstances. Of course, people wanted him to do that. Bishops were asking, so it was coming from all over the world. We sometimes think we're living in the worst of times. God only knows. Uh, but we shouldn't think that others, the church has not been through difficult times in the past. Um, but it is true, we do, we do have a lot of uh, struggles today uh, to be Christians and we're in the church to have her, her proper, to be able to fulfill her proper mission in the world, which is sublime, which is surpasses that of any nation on earth. It's a divinely instituted um, society, you know, uh, um, an institution. So uh, Joseph is, we really do need his protection. We really do need his protection. And we're so happy that Pope Francis has made this a year of St. Joseph, so we can reflect on on these things and how important Joseph is and to, to the church and to each and every one of us. So I say it again, go to Joseph, discover how powerful of an intercessor he is for you and how he can extricate you from many difficulties and show you the path that God wants you to follow and accompany you with Mary his spouse and of course with Jesus so we have uh, we have the Holy Family with us we have the whole company of Saints we really have nothing to fear go to Joseph let me conclude with this prayer of the Pope from his letter let us pray hail guardian of the Redeemer spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary to you God entrusted his only son in you Mary placed her trust with you Christ became man Blessed Joseph, to us to show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen.